So it seems it's only a matter of time before the feminization of the workplace is complete and the dominant male boss of old is in every sense redundant. What does society make of those who hold what you might call unreconstructed views on men and women's roles? Are there still men who dare to adhere to a more traditional way of life? I managed to unearth one of these rare breeds in Cambridgeshire. The countryside campaigner and farmer Robin Page married recently for the first time at 61. He believes in a division of duties many would find archaic, indeed outrageous. Would you uh, regard yourself as an old-fashioned kind of male by present day standards? Um, I think I am a, a, a traditional male in outlook and physical construction. <laughs> and and self-sufficient? Uh, virtually, yes. But you did yeah. get married, recently. I did get married, and to a, why was a, that, then? a beautiful wife. Well, a friend of mine said, Robin, uh, uh, um, uh, why are you getting married at your age? So I said, well, you want something warm in bed at this time of life. So he said, why don't you get a good terrier? And so I said, well, I haven't yet found a terrier that can use a hoover. Um, well, that so, sounds as if you've got the relationship right from the start. Well, so we've got a very good relationship because she has got small feet, so she can get really close to the sink. And um, so that is also good. Um, How do you expect your wife to behave? Um, Anita behaves um, very lovingly, very beautifully, and she knows that uh, I'm busy um, earning a living. Uh, she doesn't go out to work, and if she wanted to get a job, I would be happy for that as well, as long as she didn't expect me to cook and sweep, because she knows what I'm like. I don't want it. I wouldn't expect her to get up at two o'clock in the morning um, when we start lambing to check the lambs. And similarly, I would hope that um, if she sees a bit of dust uh, on the sideboard, she wouldn't expect me to dust it. Please tell them not to write. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pointless, would it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what do you say when women of a feminist disposition come up to you and, uh, and, and regard you as something prehistoric? I, uh, I, and not to mention appalling. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I did a talk the other day when, when people stormed out. Political correctness is the, is the new sort of McCarthyism. I remember going to the BBC and opening a door for a woman and she just stalked past and didn't say thank you and so... Uh, I do think political correctness in London, it, it's, it, it's an entertainment. There is this huge political pressure on you to be a new man. Where does this pressure come from? Deep, I believe from the politicians. I think it yeah. is a polit... Yes, I do. You think Tony Blair is... Uh, oh, uh, feminising uh, society? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you've only got to look at him, and yes, is the answer. But it could be. You're just a chauvinistic old croak. Could be. Could be. Only time will tell whether I'm right or they're wrong. What does it all add up to? Well, there are lots of exceptions, of course, lots of qualifications. But basically, men have lost their role. And women, for the first time in history, are on top. And there's nowhere where men have been more obviously marginalised than in the family. I think this feminisation of Britain has taken a number of different forms. Probably the most important, I would say, is the uh, restructuring of the family around the idea that fathers are a kind of optional extra. They've become, uh, if I can boil it down in this way, um, no more than uh, sperm donors, walking wallets and occasional au pairs. More than a quarter of births in the UK are now outside marriage, and many women consider single motherhood a perfectly acceptable lifestyle choice. But I think this growing trend for women using men just to have a baby and then discarding them is dangerous. I think children need two parents, a male reference point as well as a female one. I would, of course. I'm a man. Laura Baker Graves is a life coach and single mother. She has three sons by three different fathers. Nor was being a single parent um, choice or circumstance? A oh, choice. Sure. Absolutely. I was, um, how old was I? 32, 33. Although I'd never been greedy in my 20s, I'd always said I wasn't going to have kids, actually. I then started to think 
that having kids was something I really wanted to do. I wasn't willing to miss out on it. So you've got three children? Yes. Uh, by different fathers? Yes. None of whom are around, on at least on a permanent basis now. That's uh, right. They are at best walk-on parks in, in your family life. Yes. Does it work? Yes. It works Seriously, really... does it work, or are you no, just making it, the best No, it? it works really, really well. I had a lot to offer a child. I, it might sound arrogant, but I thought I would make a blooming good parent. I mean, I had a fantastic childhood. My parents and I are still really, really close. So I felt I had a very good role model. I would say that I'm intelligent and articulate and, you know, quite sort of go out there and, and do it. And um, But you talk about having a, 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 a good childhood, maybe even an ideal childhood, with two parents. I mean, you didn't yes. have any reservations well, about, because, you know, you were taking a risk, didn't you? Two parents, but... You didn't think it was essential for your child? No, I didn't think so. What did your family know? Oh, uh, well, after a bit of initial shock, they were very supportive. They're, as I said, my parents are um, outstanding, and they're very good at letting me make my own mistakes. W what do your children make of it? I don't think it strikes them as unusual, actually. I have an awful lot of women friends who are single parents, um, and so that's something that kids perceive as the norm in a way. I mean, the really fascinating thing about about this is who you are with three <coughs> children, five different fathers, none of them are around, which to people of, anyway, my parents' generation, maybe even in my generation, would regard as, as uh, <coughs> how can I put this, unconventional, perhaps even disgraceful. <laughs> and here you are, a life coach. <laughs> Do you think this is the kind of lifestyle that should be encouraged? Oh, <clears throat> maybe encourage is too strong a word, but I think anything can be made to work because everything seems so incredibly. But wouldn't you prefer to be in a single, long-lasting relationship with a man who was father to all three? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Seriously. Um, seriously. Families, it's generally agreed, are more complicated than ever before. Long gone are the days of breadwinner dads, housewife mum, and 2.4 children. Today, websites market sperm for women who want the child but not the husband, while men are driven to dress up as Batman and Spider-Man to demand father's rights. I think that um, the effect on the children of fathers becoming detached from family life has been absolutely disastrous. Generally speaking, the children of fragmented families where there is no committed father sitting around do worse in every single area of life. It's a built-in disadvantage. And we have built in now to our society this built-in disadvantage because we have told ourselves it's no big deal. It's preferable for a father to stay around, but basically women can do it alone. Already, large numbers of council estates in impoverished areas are effectively matriarchies. Both men and women are unemployed, but the women do still have a role. They can be mothers, and increasingly they'd rather do that by themselves. The men are reduced to fleeting fertilization duties, then dismissed. Having been told that they are an optional extra in the family setup, they carry that out, and they say, OK, in that case, I won't be around. The result is that everyone believes that. These young men have no meaningful role, either in the factory or the home. Many react by taking refuge in drink, drugs, crime and loutish behaviour in a rather pathetic attempt to reassert what they believe it is to be masculine. Go out, squat the car, have a bit of fun in it. Go in the back field, fly around there. Come out the door. And set them on fire when they finish with it. If this continues, one of the greatest dangers of 21st century life will be the rogue, redundant male.